afternoon and welcome to the Sunday Chill with me, Claire Manning from Thirsty Brush. Uh, I'm here with another card making demonstration for you. Uh, so I'm going to be using the Birthday Vibes, uh, this beautiful heart with the oranges and orange flower in there. And it's coordinating dye that cuts around uh, the heart and all the detail in there. So I thought... I would try a technique that I haven't done before. I saw a video on somebody else's channel where they used uh, a heart design die cut and made a hinged card uh, that you could put an extra sentiment behind or write your message, an extra message behind. And I thought that looks like the same kind of style and, and size of our birthday vibes heart. I mean, mine is a, a, a stamp and die rather than the, the one that was used on this demonstration was just a die cut that did lots of detail. But I thought, let's have a go and see if we can get the same kind of effect. So I hope you're all well. Anyway, having a nice relaxing Sunday and it's Mother's Day today. So before I start, just to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, grandmothers, stepmothers, fur baby mothers, uh, anybody who has a, a mothering role of uh, of some kind uh, you're all super super important to all the people that you look after out there so I hope you're having a relaxing day and getting a bit spoilt after I've had the live chat with you uh, on here guys I'm going to be having a nice Sunday dinner cooked for by my husband and children so I can't wait for that do say, pop in and say hi on the live chat uh, I do pre-record these videos at the moment during the pandemic but I am available on the live chat if you have any questions or just pop in and say hi and join in the conversation. There's normally tons of people, tons of other crafters there as well. And we all have a nice giggle together. Do subscribe as well. Give the video a like if you enjoy these kind of card making craft videos. And feel free to suggest anything that you might want to see to me as well. So enough rubbling from me, let's crack on. Oh, the other um, item that I'm going to be using is the paving punch die that I've been using quite a lot in my backgrounds. Please ignore that bit. I made a mistake and popped, left a die stuck to my magnetic sheet through my die cutting machine, but it still works perfectly. <laughs> it doesn't give that love impression, but we all make these mistakes, don't we, sometimes? So... Let's just quickly go through. There's a few different things that you're going to need. I've got my card blank. I'm doing this five by seven, which is perfect for that heart. But you could go up a size if you want or a square card. I've got a couple of bits of blue card that I'm going to use with that paving punch die in a minute. And I've got plenty of white card uh, to do my stamping and die cutting and some holographic. Um, but you use whatever you've got to hand. So let's start off by... Stamping and die cutting, or uh, the reverse in this case, die, uh, die cutting then stamping the heart design. So for this I want to die cut out the main heart design. And because it's a plate die it can be difficult to line up if you do the stamping first. So that's why I'm doing the die cutting first in this instance. We will use the outline one as well, but for now, let's just get this part popped through my machine. So just some white cardstock. Um, what I'm using is 300 GSM, so I can stamp really nicely onto it. It's going to hold its shape really well. And I'm going to do some pencil colouring today, I think. So just grab my Eureka. For the stamping part. And take that lovely heart stamp off. So there we go, it's already cut out all the detail for us. I'm just going to hold that in place. I don't want to use magnets because 
this design has got that lovely line detail in the stamp can you see and magnets would get in the way of that so i just use a little bit of low tack or washi just to hold it in place there while i stamp okay so i need to go in a couple of times i'm actually going to stamp with a really pale ink and then hopefully if we do some pencil coloring you're going to almost lose the lines completely um, and then we can add some extra detail if we need to to make it bolder but i'm just going to use you always ask me about this one uh it's the jenny bowen uh for ranger malted milk and i think it's discontinued so if you can't get hold of this um i had a few people ask me what would you use as an alternative so versamark do the smoky gray or if you want this kind of shade a i think it's toffee or something but they are darker so if you want it really really pale what i would suggest is uh just do an off page stamp first so when you're actually on your design it's say second generation or even third generation if you want it super super light that will just get rid of some of the ink for you so i don't know whether you can pick that up on the camera i hope so but it is very very pale the stamping so we pretty much lose it so we're done with that bit Let's get on with some colouring. So I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do about the line, whether I want a, um, a double line design around the edge, whether I'll go in and do anything with that to make that bolder or leave it as it is. I, don't, I just don't know yet. I think I'll wait and see how the oranges turn out first. So I'm going to grab few different colours here. Got some oranges, some greens, yellows and a grey. I think that should just about do. Always go back and get some more if we need. So I'm going to start off by just using this lightest creamy pencil just to pop a very light wash of colour all over the oranges just to get rid of that stark whiteness and then we can build some light and shade and some depth on top of that oh, dog hair I don't think I've done any kind of crafting or had any meal in the last two years that we've had this dog without some kind of dog hair in it. But you'll be pleased to know Horse is behaving himself very well at the moment. He's sat just looking out the window. He sits on top of his crate, which is his bed. So he doesn't go in his crate in the daytime, just at night. But he sits on top of it. He's got blankets and cushions and all sorts on top of it. And he just uh, sits in the bay window watching the world go by. Uh, that's another one there. So let's try some, some of this dull. Let's decide which side. Let's have this right side shadier. Just over a third, not quite a half of the orange with just a wash. Of this deeper yellow. Just find using a light hand and doing lots of light layers. Although, you know, you have to have some patience with it. 
I feel it just gives a better result for pencil colouring than going in. You know, I might use some of these colours two or three times in two or three layers to get the effect I want, but it, it's so much easier to add more. You can't really take it away, so you end up sometimes then overworking it if, it, if it's not coming out as you like it. Okay, so we've got a tiny bit of depth starting to come through. Let's actually add some of an orange colour. And let's do that lightly all over. And I'm hoping then it picks up some of that depth from underneath. Can you hear that little tune in the background? That's my washing machine. <laughs> Plays me a little song when it's finished. Very pleasant. So just starting to get some some depth there. If you want some super super light areas, you can leave them with just the lightest shade. or even white if you want it to look really bright like the, um, the sunlight is bouncing off them. So I'm just going to leave this patch in the middle here, even lighter than the rest. So relaxing. Pencil colouring I find does take a lot longer than using your other mediums, your pens, your alcohol markers or watercolour brush pens or certainly longer than paint if you're just doing washes. But it's a chance to really enjoy your colouring and you know step into that mindful place. So we're really getting that feel of like those spherical oranges now. Same colour. I'm just doing, going around about two thirds of the edge and I'm just going to start darkening the edge there. Just pressing a little bit harder than I have been. And you can either use your strokes or circles, whatever you feel. That's going to start adding even more depth. And see they're starting to pop out even more The lines are looking a little harsh. I find softening them with some little flicks. 
get some of that softness back. Okay, just before I finish off the oranges with the darker areas and any shadow that I want to put in with the grey, I'm going to uh, switch now to the leaves. Again, I'm going to go in first with this creamy colour and just take the starkness out of the white. That can help with, sometimes when you have greens, whether it's paints or um, pencils like this or even pens, Sometimes the greens um, can look a little unnatural. And, you know, there's, it's lovely to have nice, vibrant colours. But when you're trying to go for a more realistic look, they can look a little too vibrant. Um, and a little too, like I say, just unnatural, really. So grinding it by adding a little cream or grey or something like that underneath just stops that starkness of the white popping through and making the green look even more unnatural so i'm going to go in with this one and you see like that's quite a bright it's called light green but it's very very bright and it's fine for a base and i'm doing a very light wash now and again we're going to build layers and i'm going to come in with a slightly more realistic looking greens with some depth and build some shadow. And within this we've got some little stems and we've got some white orange flowers are normally kind of little white flowers. I'm nearly there with the wash. Let's just take a, so we're still very light here. Let's go, yeah. If you watched my video the other day with some alcohol markers, we did the shade, the darker area from the base of the leaf and the tip of the leaf to make the center of the leaf look the shiniest where the light's reflecting. So let's do a similar effect here, but with pencils. So hopefully this just gives you these tips then. It doesn't matter whether you've got these items or not. Just give you some hints and tips of your colouring and your shading. And then obviously we've got the extra technique here today with um, creating this as a hinged card. But like I say, I saw that somewhere and I thought that would work really nicely. But I also wanted to give you these colouring tips as well. I think this green here needs a good sharpen. I've done the slightly darker at the base and the tip. Oh. And that one there. There's two little leaves overlapping here, so I'm just going to make sure I can distinguish between those two with the shading. Make sure that isn't lost. And let's go in with this even, I don't think that's even quite the right darkness. I'm gonna have brown, some browns as well for the twigs and stuff in a minute. Uh, let's try this emerald green. very bright. I think I need to buy some 
extras of these pencils because you know you can buy them individually if you haven't got the full I've only got a 36 set I haven't got the big is it 120 the, the largest yeah this isn't really quite the right shade but I think you'll see what we're trying to get at here she's just adding just tiny tips of the darker really make them pop out for the page without having that harsh line of a, a black stamp okay let's go back in with that dull green just blend that a little bit So tell me guys what else are you up to today for Mother's Day? Give you a nice dinner, have you been spoiled, have you had any nice presents? I always say to my children, don't worry too much, they do always get me something. But I say don't, you know, go crazy, you don't need to, I don't need to have big presents. The biggest thing that makes my Mother's Day is not having to do as many chores so if they can make me a nice cup of tea and all club together and do the dinner uh, stick a load of washing in or something like that oh, I, that's the biggest gift they could give me on Mother's Day and they've been very very good so then just back in with that do you remember this lighter one and just give it a final wash all over just to really bring all that together. Just really blends all those shades then. I think we're starting to get there. I think if we do the twigs, and the little flowers and then go back and just work some final shading on those oranges I think we'll be done like I say you have to have a bit of <laughs> patience for these kind of pencil designs of course you can just do little washes oh I've missed a little leaf there the thing this is so pale this stamp, um, the ink I've used, sorry, for this stamp, but there. A little twig here that comes from behind and then the flower is there another flower there with a little twig down here some twigs okay so for the flowers because they're white I'm not colouring them in, I'm just going to outline them very gently with this grey just to distinguish them from the white background. So I'm just tracing over where the stamped lines are just very loosely and I think sometimes they have almost like a pinky center or a pinky tinge to them so just to give it that illusion it doesn't need to be perfect 
I'm just doing a tiny bit of light pink. Just in those centers. Okay, right, let's add some shade and definition now to really make these final orangey pop. So, you know, you get that kind of orange peel texture, that like stippled. Texture on an orange or lots of fruit. I'm just going to do some dots. And this is in a dark grey. On the shade, on the side, sorry, of the orange that has the most shade on it. Because the shadows of the shade, I feel like, are bringing out that texture. And let's try with this orangey as well. And I'm just going to very gently. some final shade with this super bright orange and this medium one as well just blend that Giving it a final wash. Okay, I'm just going to finish off those and then let's have a look at this hinged part of this card. Okay, so we need to now get on to the die cutting part for this hinge. So just, uh, I finished off that last bit of colouring and then I've gone round the dark, the double um, line around the edge with uh, just a fine liner just to bring that out. If you don't feel confident to do that because mine is a little bit wobbly then just do your stamping in black in the first place um, or you could go around say with your embossing pen, luminosity embossing pen and add some black or some gold or something embossing powder. So the next thing we need to do is uh, need a couple of pieces of white card something to go behind so i'm using holographic here you can use um any color you want or glitter card or anything like that um or you can just use white and the back and then you need a piece of acetate so this is just a couple of inches wide and i've just folded it in half and we'll need some double-sided tape so just to get this going because there's quite a bit of die cut in here is I need one heart. So this is just the outline of the heart now, Oops. not the detail bit. I need one in holographic. 
And I think I need two more. We'll keep an extra spare piece around. It's the first time I've done this type of hinge. So we're winging it a little bit here. <laughs> So that's the holographic that's going to sit behind there nicely i'll cut that i'll glue that down in a moment another white piece again in white and I think that will be enough then Right then, let's glue this piece down. So this becomes, this is what will hinge up on top of the card and have an extra secret message behind. centralize that it should give you it's about two mil on the outside just gonna leave that to stick as when you do it on mirror type card then it can just take an extra little bit of time to stick while that's gluing let's get our hinge ready so I might not need all of this but I've got some double-sided tape just get a nice clean edge so I'm going to need double-sided tape all over it. So I'm going to do it in like sections so it's nice and neat. So the outer and the inner. I'm not peeling anything off at the moment. I'm just applying it all over on each side. Can you see that? So there's double sided tape, that side, that side, that side, all four sides of it. And actually, I don't want the hinges to be too bulky. So I'm going to make two hinges out of that one piece of tape because that was the thinnest I'd got to hand at the moment. Just pop my lid back on that before that dries out. So I'm just going to trim down the middle of that tape. So that's hinge one. And let's get rid of that excess acetate. Hinge two. Okay, so this should be nice and set now. I need the inner part to go in the middle. Can you see just the top of this little heart here? So it flaps back like that. Same again. Have to concentrate when I'm doing this because it's like I say, it's the first time I've done this kind of hinge. Try and get them even. So 
just come up slightly above the top of the arch of the heart and then now this piece needs to sit on top and hide all that workings so I'll peel the double sided off there and add some extra glue that double sided will hold the hinge in place but obviously you've got this whole die cut that you want to sit nice and flat so that will sit on top just a little bit of excess tape just come off the top there but i might be able to scrape that off with my scissors neaten that up a bit so that will become the bit that flaps up so what also needs to happen is you need a piece to write your message on on your card so that will become this piece here let's do it the right way up so if I just place it on and then peel back these bits of tape that's going to hold that back panel in place okay and then we stick it onto the card so that bit will be hidden onto the card itself as well so I'm happy with that let's get our card blank ready so I've got a five by seven and I've got two pieces of blue. One I'm just gonna put on flat, and the other I'm gonna run through the die cutting machine now with this tape and punch die. And it's just gonna give us that extra little bit of texture Oops, for behind our heart. So I'll take this one down first. just slightly smaller than the card and then that's that lovely textured blue piece with all that nice paving punch detail or crazy paving as uh, my dean calls that and he has to do a, a voice when he says it crazy paving <laughs> like he's singing it like um What's his by Keith Lemon or something? <laughs> Crazy baby. But it can give a really nice modern edge. Oh, good grief. And I know lots of you got hold of this in the sale, didn't it? This is one of those dies that comes out for me when it just needs something extra. Just needs a bit of extra texture or something in the background not the focal point but just you know and, uh, and then whenever I use it I'm like yes that was perfect it's exactly what I wanted okay so that's our lovely card blank and can you see now that's going to sit on there and open up I haven't made these hinges the neatest I think next time I do it, I will not put the tape quite far to the edge and not have them quite sticking up at the top there. Can you see? But first time, it's not too bad. 
So just decide whether you want it in the middle or up. And then I'm just going to add this little, should we have it underneath? Yeah, let's have it. You could stamp into there, you could hand write into there. You could have, if you've got those kind of two part sentiments where they're on different stamps and you can mix and match, then you could have the first part in there and the other on the inner of your card. So it's just another way of using those lovely dies and stamps together. And you can do this with, it hasn't got to be a heart, you can use hinges on squares, circles. So uh, if you've got the other ones in this collection or other hearts, circles, anything like that, or shapes that you can die cut and create that lovely hinged flap on your card. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, horses come to say goodbye. Come on then, you give me a kiss. Are you gonna say hello to everybody? Yeah? Oh, lovely, thank you. Uh, so take care of yourself guys and I will see you back on Thursday, Thursday at 1pm as normal. Take care, bye.